Hello everybody. It's the second week of Lent, but I'm just doing a second day. I'm hoping to do 40 days of reading the Bible. Um, Genesis and Matthew, and hopefully it'll work out. Uh, I missed the pancake supper last week, but there's going to be a fish Friday fish fry tomorrow at the Greek church. So let's go. Friday night fish fry. The Catholics uh, have fish on Fridays during Lent. It's a tradition that's in the Catholic Church. It's not really in the Bible, but we'll make something good of it and read the Bible together. Thanks for coming with me. Matthew 3, 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers. So this is John at his baptism. There's snakes, or he's, John is at his baptism. He's baptizing people. Pharisees and Sadducees are religious, legalistic leaders, and he's calling them a brood of vipers, or snakes. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Who warned you about the wrath to come? The anger, the wrath, the anger is coming. Who warned you? Who gave you a warning to run, to flee, to run away from the wrath that is to come? So it's a kind of a difficult sentence. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? So John is baptizing people. The Pharisees come to challenge him. He's going to get mad at them, call them of snakes. And who, he said, who warned you about the wrath to come? Here comes the anger, I guess the anger of God. And who told you about that, to run away? I think he's calling them to repent, if I remember right. Therefore, bear fruits worthy of repentance. Here's the fruit. The Pharisees bring some fruit, fruit of repentance, of change. We want things to change, different results. We want to do a U-turn and come to God, come to Jesus. Produce fruit results that show change in the Lord. This is my own words. U-turn, I've heard it called. Repentance, change in the Lord. So do a U-turn, bring fruit, produce worthy of repentance and change. Matthew 3, 9. And do not think to say to yourselves we have abraham as our fathers we have abraham as our fathers don't think about saying abraham is our dad abraham is the father of the pharisees and sadducees the jewish leaders don't think about saying that you're okay just because abraham is your relative don't think to say don't say it we have abraham as our fathers father for I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. So the children will be raised to Abraham from stones. So from the stones, children of Abraham can come. I need to read more about that. So he's telling the Pharisees, repent, bear fruit of repentance, do a U-turn, don't to say we have Abraham as our father we're okay you still have to change because God can raise up children from the stones raise up children to Abraham from the stones so I think he means you still have to repent don't think that you're okay Matthew 3.11 3.11.1 indeed baptize I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. John's baptize, baptism is for water, for repentance and change. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to, check, to carry. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. Uh, Jesus is mightier than John, greater than John. Someone is coming after John who is greater than him. That's a greater sign in math. 
John is not worthy to carry his sandals. No, he's not worthy. He's not good enough. John sounds very humble and down low and not proud. He will baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. The one who is coming after him will baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. I baptize you for with water. John's baptism is water for repentance and change. But somebody's coming after John who's greater than John. And John is not able, not worthy, not good enough to carry his sandals. So really, Jesus is, Jesus is coming next. John's not good enough to carry his sandals. And Jesus will baptize, put into water, people and wash their sins away. That's the baptism is symbolic. And uh, J Jesus will baptize with fire and the Holy Spirit. His winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor. So there's a winnowing fan, and he's cleaning out the threshing floor. I have never seen this, but I looked at pictures of it. And Jesus is going to clean out the floor and gather his wheat into the barn. There's the wheat. So I think he's going to take the wheat into heaven, the good the believers into heaven and clean up the, sh the sh sh chaff, the extra. But he will burn up the sh chaff with unquenchable fire. Chaff will burn. Fire never satisfies. So Jesus is going to clean up with his fan, the floor. He's going to put the good wheat in the barn. He's going to burn the chaff or the extra. And here's a picture of Jesus cleaning out his threshing floor. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's go for a couple, few more minutes and then have dinner. Uh, we're having chicken tonight. So this is Matthew 3.13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you are coming to me. So John says, stop. You, I need to be baptized by you, but you are coming to me. Jesus says, baptize me. And they are cousins. It doesn't really talk about that, but they are cousins. Jesus and John, you need to baptize me, not me baptize you. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. So this Bible verse, I, Bible version I think I used was New King James, so it's kind of older English. So let's talk through it again. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit, allow it to be so now, for thus it is fitting, it's okay for us to fulfill all righteousness. It's good for us to fulfill righteousness allow this let jesus says allow this let's baptize me let's do this and fulfill all righteousness good righteousness is goodness or right standing being right with god then he allowed him so john baptized jesus and we've talked about baptism immersion all the way in the water and sprinkling sprinkling water on somebody's head like the Methodists do, different denominations. Catholics, Lutherans. Okay, Matthew 3.16. The Spirit of God descending... Whoops. I am messy. Matthew 3.16. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove so that's a long sentence when he had been baptized jesus came up immediately from the water and behold the heavens were opened up heavens up in the sky clouds he saw the spirit of the heavens were opened he saw the spirit of god land on him this he saw the spirit of god like a dove descending and landing descending going down like an airplane is going to descend 
the Holy Spirit is like a dove and is going to descend and land on Jesus, who was just baptized. How exciting. Matthew 3.16 again. That's Okay, this was, a, I wrote it again. Sometimes, I've been drawing the Bible for about 12 years since I moved out of state, and I've done two or three drawings sometimes of a certain scenes in the Bible. So you can circle, some of them are included. You can circle what you like out of the two or three pictures. So this is Matthew 3.16 again. The Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him, and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, there's a voice from heaven, my voice, my voice is kind of high because I'm a girl, so I wonder what God's voice sounded like, a voice from heaven. I'm not a girl, I'm a woman, I'm middle aged, but my voice is high, I believe. So what does voice, God's voice sound like? It's, and it says, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Pleased means you are proud of somebody, you are happy for somebody. So God says, This is, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Matthew 4, 1, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness. Jesus is led by the Spirit. Maybe he couldn't see the spirit. I don't know what spirit looks like. But I'm drawing a person to represent the spirit. Maybe the Holy Spirit. Jesus is led by the spirit into the wilderness. And here's the wilderness. Wild sand, trees. I should do some palm trees. To be tempted by the devil. So Jesus is now... Baptized and starting his ministry, I believe he's 30. And we'll talk about Jesus was led by the Spirit. Now, is it the Spirit of God? I'm not sure. Holy Spirit? I need to look that up. So the dove landed on Jesus, or was the Spirit was like a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So is God pleased with us today? I hope so. I hope we're coming to him slowly but surely. And then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness, sand, nothing's there. And he's going to be tempted by the devil. The devil is the bad guy. He is an angel. He used to be with God, with the other angels, and then he rebelled and left and took other angels with him. So watch out for the devil and resist the devil. And we'll talk more about that tomorrow. Have a good night.